How's it going, everyone? And welcome back to Sleep by the Hearth, where today we're doing a special card discussion about uh, the Whispers of the Old Gods. It seems like Blizzard is finally, you know, reaching out and acknowledging the ASMR community, because much like ASMR people, such as myself, old gods are going to be whispering. I'm not much of a whisperer, so I guess I'll let the old gods do it for me. <laughs> so, today we're going to spend some time talking about C'Thun and some of the other cards surrounding C'Thun as well. So, as of today, it is uh, the 14th of March at 9.23 at night. Don't know what the late... They, they, they kind of just changed up the, the website a little bit. I think the latest card that they had released was the uh, five drop, which was summon five one ones for Paladin. Yeah, that's just the uh, latest card. So there's no, there's been no other cards released so far, uh, especially that has the interactiveness uh, with Cthulhu, such as Twilight Elder and Beckoner Evil. Which are going to be the other two cards that we go ahead and discuss. All right, so let's start off. Thune, as you can see here, by the way, uh, just to give you a little precedence, uh, I am not a professional player by any means. I am, I guess, sort of casual, sort of hardcore. I call myself the, the middle ground kind of player. I usually don't get very high ranked up into the ladder, but if I took it seriously, I could probably get, I don't know, at least rank 10 and above, and I know that's not saying a whole lot, but I guess that kind of gives you an idea. I usually spend a fair amount of time in casual, because I like to have fun, and just create fun decks that aren't necessarily with the meta. So, I want to preface this with, you're not going to be getting a super professional opinion. I know everyone's going to want to leave right here, especially for those of you on Reddit, but this is for the people who just like to really just take a less serious look at things. I'm going to give what I consider my serious analysis, which will probably undoubtedly be wrong, but I'm going to give my fun analysis because I believe some of the cards that are coming out are going to have some huge fun factors, and I know that's really what Blizz wants to focus on. So that's kind of where we're carrying it from here. I won't dredge on too much with that, just kind of wanted to let you know that you're not going to be getting the Trump or Kriparian or Raynad perspective, because they're going to be thinking on purely numbers, how am I going to win the game? I'm going to be thinking of how do I win the game, but how do I also have really fun interaction with the game too? So, just wanted to give you a, give you a hint where uh, I'm coming from. So, with that, as you can see on the screen, Cthune is a 10 mana 6-6 six, six with a battle cry that says, deal damage equal to this minion's attack randomly split among all enemies. So, you kind of have a couple of different cards in this. You have a 6-6 six, six with an Avenging Wrath that costs 10 mana. An Avenging Wrath, I believe, costs either 6 or 8 mana. I don't remember off the top of my head. I don't use it that much, so I don't truly remember. But C'Thun is very unique because he has other cards that interact with him, even if he's not on the field, or even in your hand, or anything. Um, we'll, we'll get to that to a later point. So just looking at the card itself, it's a 10 mana, 6-6, six, six, with a battle cry, but does that make it, you know, does the battle cry make up for the fact that the stats look completely horrendous? Like if you were to play this out, it's that late in the game, it's gonna take up your entire turn. Is it really worth it compared to other 10 mana cards. In fact, let's pull up some of the other 10 mana cards. Uh, Molten Giant doesn't really count because that's co uh, the Giants don't count in general because their costs can go down. But we have Anything Can Happen, Mind Control, Pyroblast, Deathwing, uh, once again one of the Giants doesn't really count, and Varian Rin. So, let's take a look starting with Rin. Granted, he is a warrior specific card, which kind of plays into it. But he has a pretty, he's kind of similarly stated. He's 10 mana, 7-7. Seven, seven. Is this draw three cards and put any minions on the field? I mean, draw three is pretty good in, gen in general. But I think the fact that this is just a warrior card kind of makes it, you know, a thing that's not going to weigh heavily 
into the discussion about uh, Cthulhu versus this because, you know, it's one out of the nine classes. However, Deathwing is a 10 mana. It's 10 mana, 12, 12, which is double the stats of Cthulhu. However, it has a very steep cost, and that's destroy all the minions, which is, you know, pretty good in and of itself because it can clear the board. But we have to get rid of our entire hand in order to play it. So if we have a large hand, we lose out on everything, and he is very subjectable to CC and many other things, which is probably why he's not often played. However, we have a 10 mana spell card, anything can happen. Now this is a very unique card because you can kind of control how this card is going to play out. You can, you've obviously heard of some of, you know, some of the many one turn kill Murloc Paladins that give you the ability to summon out uh, war leaders with, um, was it Blue Guild Warrior? And of course, God, I can't believe I'm forgetting the name of the, uh, the other charge Murloc. The, uh, I think it's a 4-2 stat, 4-4 four, four stat. My god, I know, I'm such a scrub lord for forgetting. Um, and the, the thing, I actually play Murlocs from time to time. But you can affect, you can effectively control what you get out of this card. You know, what you put into it is what you get out based on what you play. So it's a very unique card. 10 mana mind control, obviously mind control is uh, something that is the bane of many players, but you know, it can steal something like a Deathwing, or it could steal something like, I don't know, what else could we have on the field? Any of these other really big monstrosities, such as uh, Malganus or Malagos, you know, any of these other big cards, or just anything in general. You know, it's a 10 mana, I get what you have, you get nothing in return. Pyroblast, just straight up 10 for 10. You know, it's a 10 mana, one-time use charge, if you really want to think of it that way. And then, of course, that's pretty much about it as far as 10 drops go. I know I kind of, I don't know if I like the 10 mana. I can definitely see where it's going with the other cards interacting with Cthulhu, but because it's one of those things where how often are you gonna get that interaction and how often is that interaction gonna slow down the rest of your deck? It's one of those things that we're gonna get into in just a little bit. So I think we kind of touched upon Cthulhu uh, close enough to the end. Obviously there's gonna be some combos. I know I saw yesterday uh, with the other video that I made that um, You know, there was actually a little graph off to the side over here that They had before the this link became broken. I guess it had a little thing of like who uh, is gonna build You know the most with this and it was there was tons of rogue because of things like a uh, shadow step or imagine getting a um, oh Shoot, what's the other thing gang up? Oh my god a gang up on Cthulhu would be nuts yeah, Rogue and Cthulhu is going to be just a crazy time. And there was many other combos that I wasn't even thinking of. In fact, let's scroll down and see if we can get some in the comments. Because um, I'm sure someone had to repost. And that's the thing, every uh, every one of the comments got erased too. At least it looks like it did. Maybe comments just moved that fast from what I, from what I remember of yesterday. Huh. I don't see any. I didn't do my comment research in advance. I do apologize. Uh, there's all kinds of ways to return them to your hand. Um, there's all kinds of ways to boost the ability of the battle cry. And you can even use Bran Bronze Beer, obviously. However, getting a Bran that late in the game to last, because if you see a Bran on turn 9, you probably know there's going to be a Cthulhu on turn 10. So, that'll be one of those obvious giveaways. But if you can make it work, you'll be good to go. So, let's move on, shall we? Let's get ourselves over to his interactions. And we have a Twilight Elder. Now, for all intensive purposes, if, say for example, if you never draw Cthune, or you never get a chance to use it, it is a three mana, three, four blank. Which essentially puts it at a, well, what's it called? Uh, there's, there's a couple of cards I think that are three mana, three, four. One of them is the one of the mechs um spider mech or spider mech tank or whatever the heck it is my god all the names are just eluding me of course on the time that i went to discuss hearthstone the names leave my head that's always fine oh uh, yeah spider tank uh it's basically a spider tank with an effect so you get a little something out of it that you might get to use down the line whether or not 
you actually draw, you know, Cthim. So, what do I think of it? Uh, you know, other than the stat-wise, I think this card is definitely pretty interesting. It's got kind of this cool idea of, you know, it's what it's what I consider to be an unofficial taunt. You know, if you see this on the board and then you see something else, most likely you're going to want to kill the Twilight Elder. And I think in very few circumstances, you're going to see something that's more powerful than this that you're going to want to kill right away. And for those of you that have Twilight Elder, uh, you're going to want to try to come up with ways to protect it. So I can definitely see this in a, uh, in a priest deck uh, that wants to buff it up keep it going for as long as it can to can make that because they were just absolutely insane by the end of the game or whenever you draw it or whenever you're just able to play it like imagine you get this out you know turn three you're a priest you're healing this thing up you're buffing it up or you have other taunts that you're buffing up to keep this thing alive and your opponent's just not drawing good cc or you have other things that somehow look scarier than this that they end up ccing instead it's just uh it's just a very interesting circumstance I think this card will have a lot of good interaction with other cards because it has such a powerful effect that is potential. It's one of those things where and it kind of goes along with the theme of Whispers of the Old Gods uh, and the Old Gods in general is just, you know, you fear the unknown. You don't know if and when the player is going to play Cthulhu. So you want to get rid of Twilight Elder as soon as possible, but say you see another card on the field, say for example you see an Emperor Thousand. Um, you know, it's a few turns later or something, you see Twilight Elder on the field, uh, maybe he played at uh, turn 5 and then turn 6, uh, Emperor Thousand comes out, and then you see just both of those on the field, and you're like, oh my god, which one's worse to deal with? Because if you have an Emperor Thousand, uh, granted, that would only work in Wild, I just realized, because of uh, that's a Blackrock Mountain card, so I guess that's actually a bad example. But something similar to that, you know, you get the general idea of something with an equally good effect or better than Twilight Elder. But Twilight Elder has that unknown factor of you don't know when Cthulhu's going to come out. So Cthulhu might get, you know, plus three, plus three, or plus four, plus four. It might stay on the, you know, th board for a few turns because your opponent keeps popping out or you keep popping up better minions than Twilight Elder that your opponent wants to kill. And all the while Cthulhu gets to reap the benefits of uh, their hesitation to kill Twilight Elder. So it's one of those things where it's going to slow down the game a little bit, uh, possibly, because, you know, you're playing the waiting game. You're waiting to draw your super big, awesome card. But the cool thing is the fact that Cthulhu is going to be granted to everybody. Everybody is going to have access to play this card. So uh, the only thing you'll need to actually pull from the packs are the interactions such as Twilight Elder. So I think uh, that's been kind of enough discussion. You know, you get my general philosophy on this card. I kind of oversold it, I think. But in general, I think this is actually a pretty cool addition to the game. This kind of interaction, I think, is going to be pretty neat, pretty neat moving forward. So that leaves us with the final card of the evening, Beckoner of Evil. And this one, obviously, is a 2 mana 2 3. Give Cthulhu plus 2 plus 2 wherever it is. Now... Let's go back here for just a second, and you'll notice it says in parentheses, wherever it is. So, I think that interaction is going to prove to be pretty interesting uh, in the coming game, because wherever it is means one of a few things. Obviously, in the deck, it's going to be the biggest one. In your hand, on the field, and even more importantly, after it's been destroyed. So, imagine if you're a priest, and you pull a resurrect and you got Cthulhu you know destroyed one way or another I don't know if it was a thing where it got discarded or is a thing where it got killed but you pull a resurrect and all of a sudden you have another Cthulhu out on the field now a beckoner of evil if that was played beforehand or even after um like say you play your Cthulhu and it had no buffs 10 mana 6-6 six, six. okay well then you play your beckoner of evil and you play your resurrect all of a sudden, boom, you have a 10 mana 8-8. Eight, eight. However, fortunately, you're not going to get the battle cry again. But you resurrected an 8-8 eight, eight Cthulhu because of battle cry of Beckoner of Evil. Now imagine if you had something like a brand bronze beard with Beckoner of Evil. That's going to be a pretty insane deal. Especially if you are a rogue who's uh, using things like Shadow Step or things like uh, the pandas to bounce back uh, Beckoner of Evil or any other kind of interaction cards 
um, you know, based off of a battle cry. And I think that's going to be pretty scary. We're going to see some pretty interesting combos, and I think we're going to see some really long play decks built around Cthulhu, because it's obviously not an aggro style at all. You know, the entire idea of Cthulhu is you're waiting to pull that card. You're building up the idea of this scary old god coming to just destroy everything. So it's going to be... It's going to be interesting to see how uh, decks play out. And once again, if you think about it, it's a 2 mana 2-3 two, blank if you do not get Cthulhu, which overall is just a pretty well statted card. I mean, we've seen a lot of 2 mana 2-3s two, in the game in general, but this one does not have that same kind of threat level that uh, Twi Twilight Elder has, because Twilight Elder, you know, every turn it goes by, it, it gets worse and worse. It's, much, it's very much like an Emperor Thousand if you think about it. It's almost like a Emperor Thousand's younger brother, where you know he's boosting a card that may or may not come out, whereas Emperor Thousand was just you know making everything he had much uh, less expensive. But unlike Emperor Thousand, who was a six mana five five and therefore was kind of poorly statted because other six mana uh, cards we see you know some th some things like you know six mana six seven or something like a. Uh, uh, I was trying to think. No, nah, Sylvanas is also 5-5. Five, five. But um, this is a 3-mana three 3-4, three, so it gets to keep the good stats. Same with back in Redeemer. Problem is, it's a one-time use. So unless you have a way to bounce it back, it's pretty much just kind of one and done. And if you see a rogue, or... Uh, I'm trying to think if there's any other classes that have like special bounce backs. Probably not, other than just using the generic bounce back cards. But if you see a rogue with back in Redeemer, expect a Shadow Step. Really do. So... Make sure you get rid of this, which gives a little bit more of a threat than other things, but it's not going to be, it's not going to be too crazy. All right, I think that's probably going to wrap it up for today. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's go through, let's go through and read some of the comments real quick. Let me check my notes here. I want to make sure I touch upon everything. All right, so compare Cthulhu to the other ten mana cards, like I wanted to do. Uh, one thing I guess I wanted to do is compare Cthune. Where'd he go? Let's just go ahead and get him back here. I wanted to compare to some of the other 6-6 six, six static things, but I don't know if that's really going to make a huge impact on things. I'm sure we can look and kind of see. The validated uh, Doomsayer, by the way, is going to be Really fun. Cannot wait. We got 6-6. Six, six. We have to go... I don't know. Eh, maybe I just won't touch upon that point. It's not really super important. Oh, yeah. Wild versus standard play is going to be absolutely insane. I think the interaction that this could have with some of the goblins and gnomes is going to be pretty crazy. So, um, especially with things like uh, spare parts being able to bounce back things, or spare parts make things invisible, all those kind of things. So, that's just kind of my general thought process. So, what other comments? Oh, hey. That's right. So, this is another rogue card that I, I forgot to make a point of Master of Disguise. Using that with Twilight Elder is going to be a huge combo because that will make it very, very difficult to get rid of and thus extend longevity. I'm trying to think. Let's go back up. Let's go back up for just a moment. So 3 mana, 3, 4 with stealth. Just imagine that for a moment. A lot of AoE removal early game does not cover that. So a Shaman would not be able to clear that with Lightning Storm without some serious spell power boost. A mage wouldn't be able to clear it out till turn seven with um, flame strike, and it's losing flame cannon, so it can't even hope to randomly hit it. So it's either going to take some other RNG based removal or just AOE removal in general, uh, you know, in order to get rid of this thing. Obviously, there are a few other ways of doing it, but getting rid of the stealth card it's it's pretty difficult. It's why uh, curse of curse of Max Ramus is a uh, you know, still pretty decent because it can just sit there and ramp up. This card basically is a 
its own very odd uh, Curse of Nacrimus. So, um, or Shade, is it Shade? Yeah, it's Shade of Nacrimus. Oh my god. All the names. I'm looking like such a pleb. And I uh, do apologize. Shows how often I play those particular cards. Shade of Nacrimus, Curse of Nacrimus. Is it really that different? Yeah, it is. I have no excuse. <laughs> None at all. Alright. Well, uh, this is going to do it for me in my first discussion video. Uh, it's the first time I'm kind of doing this thing. I don't expect you guys to do a wheezy on me, but hey, you know, just kind of let you know uh, where things are at. You know, I know uh, I'm going to be checking out the opinion of Trump. Uh, not Donald. <laughs> Definitely not Donald. I'm pretty sure that guy's never even heard of this game. Um, but Kriparian, uh I don't know if Raina does, does discussions. I usually only watch like Trump and Crips. Uh, discussion pieces on cards, but I'm sure there's many other people that you guys follow or watching in-depth card discussion So I'm very interested to see what they have to say. I don't think Trump's come up with anything yet. I was checking earlier today. Crip might have something, but I guess we'll see. I know he likes to play around with the card, but I don't know. I guess time will tell, and I want you guys to tell me how I did today, and if there's anything that you wanted to hear about other cards in the future, or if there's anything that you want me to touch upon in the next video in regards to these three and you know if you want i can give you a shout out if you give me a comment whatever doesn't really matter anyway i'm just rambling on i am quite the rambler indeed and with that i will say i hope all of you have a good evening